Today's review of the Honey Badger in D2 Steel, we're going to take a look at not only the medium, but I have the large one for you as well. And come to find out, this design might not be as original as I thought. I'll show you what I mean. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Jay, and go ahead and click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. Right about now, you should be looking at some specs. Up on top is for the medium. Down below is for the large. But don't worry, I will also have them listed down in the description below, just in case if there's any of you that want to follow along throughout this review. Let's quickly go ahead and take care of those size comparisons and we're going to start out with the Spyderco PM2 and this is the Civivi Backlash and here is the full size cut jack from Steel Will and lastly from Cold Steel, the American Lawman. For those of you running really short on time, allow me just to go ahead and say this. I was already a big fan of the original honey badger knife uh, dating back to this first gen you know with the hcr 13 mov blade steel now with d2 what's not to like unfortunately those of you waiting for the small version it has not been released yet and honestly i don't know if they even plan on making one but one good thing is that you can get both of these now on amazon and i will be sure to go ahead and include the links down below this drop point blade shape is, is pretty much my ideal. Now, even though that they did, they did away with, well, one of my favorite features, and that being the forward, the forward finger choil, I'm honestly, I'm not all that broken up about it, specifically with the, the medium here down below, because the amount of sharpened edge that you are getting back in return, it makes this just such an efficient size. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you look at this up against the Cold Steel American Lawman, you can see the medium version has just about the same amount of sharpened edge. And you can see that the Lawman is, is a larger knife. Same goes when you compare it up against the PM2, you can see just about the same amount of sharpened edge. So my point being that you're getting the same amount of blade, but in a much more compact, smaller size. The deployment action on both is very, very good. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit better on the medium. And I say that because with the, with the large version, it's pretty easy. You can see there right on the first try, it's pretty easy to, uh, to fail the deployment. It's a lot harder. Oh, I still can do it with the medium, but it is a little more difficult. Now, if we check the, the thumb hole deployment, you can see very easy to spidey flick the large and to slow roll it. Let's try the, let's try the medium. Spidey flick, no problem. Slow roll, very easy. Even though the large is, it's fairly easy to fail, the deployment, you can see, oh yeah, that uh, the detent is, it is strong enough to at least retain the blade. Oh yeah, there's no way, there is no way I can shake that loose. I mean, it's got the multi-row caged ball bearings that the blade is riding on, and you can see that this Look at that, dropping right shut, and that was right out of the box. Look at that, that is a guillotine. Yeah, same goes for the large, so you can do that thumbnail closure. I wanna show you these, the FRN scales. You can see it's kinda of like the Benchmade bug out, where, yeah, can you see that? I'm trying to hold it still, sorry guys. But there is, there's a little bit of flex going on. Let me see if it's the same with the large. Oh yeah, yeah, just a little bit of flex there as well, which, you know, it, it's not really, it, it's not a huge deal because 
if you, let's say you drop one of these on like a cement floor, it should be less likely to, to crack because you know, they, they give a little bit. Now, if you stare down the sights, you can see that yes, these scales, they are contoured. So my medium sized hand fits very comfortably on both. Of course, with the large, there's going to be even more room left over. So those of you with the, uh, with the bigger hands, I did find some sharp edges, but at least they are on the, the inside corners. See if you can hear that. Yeah. A little bit of, a little bit of sharpness going on there. Same with the big one, the honeycomb pattern and the five areas of jimping. Yes five areas. They do provide excellent traction. Let me show you all five on the flipper tab, on the spine of the blade, right there on the liner lock. Oh yes, on the spine of the handle. And if you count the stuff there on the uh, G10 backspacer. I really do like this, these deep carry clips, especially because now it accommodates both righties and lefties. So you see there and you just swap it to the other side. And now if we look at the, the first generation honey badger, yeah, it was only just that one position clip. And I got this all the way zoomed out because I just want to show you how this 3.45 millimeter thick blade, how it cuts. First, we'll do the, uh, the medium honey badger. Oh my goodness, is that nice. And then let's check the, the large. Now this one has slightly thicker blade stock at 3.5 millimeters. Wow. Actually, they pretty much both cut about the same. Before I toss this up on the scale, I just wanted to show you, you can see it's pretty much open construction with the, uh, just that short red G10 backspacer. And if you look on the inside there, you can see, yes, the, in fact, liners have been skeletonized in an effort to reduce the weight. Let's see how they did. Wow, that's excellent. Four, what is that? Four ounces, which is going to be roughly the equivalent. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like five AA batteries. Or, oh, look at that. Just a little bit lighter than the steel wheel cut jack. And if you're at all interested, I have previously reviewed the first generation honey badger in the 8CR. If you go ahead and look up to the corner, yep, right there, you click on that icon and at the end of the video, you can go and watch this full review. Before we get to my potential deal breakers, I do have a question for you, of course. Now, if you were to pick up one of these brand new honey badger knives, which size would you get? The medium or the large? Let me know down in the comment section below. All of these potential deal breakers, they do apply to, uh, to both sizes. And honestly, there's not many. I really had to dig deep to come up with a couple deal breakers. And really, we could just call them maybe nitpicks. Number one is going to be that the liner lock and the thinness of it. The only thing that makes me nervous is just that as you know, the longer you have the knife and then this is a, of course is going to lock up farther and farther that way. I just, I, I just hope it doesn't get to the point where it's like stuck between the blade and the, uh, and the liner. Number two is regarding the flex in the scales. While it does not bother me, I know some of you don't like that at all. Third potential deal breaker is regarding the honeycomb pattern because I have heard from some of you that are really just not crazy about it. And again, I understand. Last potential deal breaker is going to be the price, which of course they are, you know, it's different prices for both of these, but I will get to those in just a second. You can see I brought in, this is the Max Ace Balance. I've had this for, well, a couple years now, and you can see these obvious similarities 
between the two, even the pivot screws are almost identical. I mean, the one on the Max Ace Balance is a little bit larger, but other than that, it has that same groove milled in. I mean, the lanyard holes are in the same exact spot. The pocket clip, same, well, pretty much the same exact spot. Both have multiple deployment options. Now the prices, so the, the medium down here at the bottom is, is $54, and the large up on top is $59. And I realized that that's far from like a screaming great deal, especially considering that Ganzo Firebird, okay, they're able to do the exact same thing but for like anywhere between 25 to $30. Really for me, the only features that really make this, you know, sort of worth the price is going to be, well, the, the action, which is amazing, as we've already determined, the blade shape, which is just gorgeous, and the multiple deployment options. Yeah, I am a big fan of when you have more than one method of, of deployment here. If it wasn't for those things, you know what, I would, I would have a hard time recommending these knives. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you got any value from it, maybe just leave a thumbs up and don't forget, click subscribe for knife reviews that get right to the point. Thanks, I will see you at the next video. You take care.